All right. Yeah. I guess, uh, so this is, um, this is a cheat stream. Uh, it's meant to be all Rust Lang all the time. Um, rocket and diesel, all of that. But uh, since I found this GameFAQ uh, guide with all the all the info on all the things we need to collect for this, I turned back to uh, to using Scala to kind of convert the plain text data into something I can fit into the database. So, so today is uh, at least part of it is going to be a Scala stream. Oh, all right. So, uh, I guess a little catch up what I've got going on right here. And I think I'm going to try and widen this up a little bit. So first and foremost, uh, I have this raw text, which is uh, copied right out of the uh, GameFAQs article that I found uh, during the last stream. So uh, there's this meals section, and this lists uh, there's a there's a little header for each of the groups, and then each of the individual items in the group there's a a long uh discussion about the thing and where you might find it i guess uh how rare they are a little write-up but there's also so this is the like the long name and the ration name so uh i'm looking for a way to take this huge block of text and parse out the the small pieces that we need in order to populate the database. Hey, you guys, welcome aboard. It's a Scala day, um, and yeah, and so I need to I need to like strip out all the stuff that we don't care about, isolate the stuff that we do care about, and uh, um, yeah, and then I guess I'll I'll kind of like string template that into uh, something that looks like SQL. Um, and then we'll use that for our uh, inserts um, using diesel. So uh, some of these sections we're not going to care about, and some of them have a slightly different format, like this miscellaneous one. So there may be some hand editing that goes into to doing this also. Um, there's also some stuff in here that I might not have to worry about. There's a whole section on packaged foods that um, I don't think contributes to the trophy progress. So, so anyway, that text is what's in this, uh, in this raw text thing. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of like parse through it piece by piece. And, uh, and so while I'm working here, I've got this kind of split buffer. Um, so I've got some Scala code that, that sits on the left-hand side and then the output is on the right-hand side. So I've got this raw text function that returns the multi-line string. And uh, we can see that the, the result of that is a function, a function that returns a string that's uh, kind of boring. But then we have all this blank space here uh, because that's kind of like the uh, the, uh, the lines that would have been part of the output from the string if, if it was printed. I don't know why the worksheet works like that, but anyway, down here in the 400 block, 
uh, we've got some other pieces of the expression results. So categories here is just uh, uh, each of the groups which are in the document identified by uh, tilde and then whatever it is. Uh, and it's kind of nice that they have that um, because you know, they set that up that way so that you could control F in your browser to like jump to different sections from the table of contents up top. Um, and uh, it, it kind of makes it nice for the parsing part, um, which is really the same concern. Uh, and so what else, what else do I have here? Uh, I took the raw text and I split by that tilde. And so, um, for each chunk that is returned by that split, I'm checking to see if the first character, right, these are, uh, chars in the string, uh, is a letter. And if it isn't, which we would see, um, we would see that on, I guess, probably just the first... the first section right so that would eliminate the the start chunk and potentially a chunk later on um, so that really is all that's doing and then uh, as we map over whatever's left um, I uh, am using the dot lines method on text which is going to generate an iterator of a string per line I take the first the first line which is going to be the category name and then uh, I filter out lines that don't have a pair of parens in there because I'm looking for again based on uh, where did that go right here based on what I'm seeing in the format we want uh, yeah we want to we want to find the lines that look like this right with the full name and then the short name so so I filter out lines that don't have an open and close parens both and then uh, I basically pair them up. So I have a, a tuple of category name and then a list of uh, the items that go in that category. Um, and so my, my for each here is just printing out uh, the category and then a new line and then uh, new line joins of all the items in the list. So, there we go, okay. So this is the actual output of the, uh, of the for each down here. So packaged foods is empty, um, and that's partially because none of the items in there, I think, have these parens, I think. Um, is that right? I have two of these open. Don't need that. Yeah, see? These are just odd instances that I don't really care about. So that's fine. It's fine that we're not capturing them. Um, and then after that, we've got a couple of false positives here. Um, I wonder if I can refine this a little more. Like what if I, what if I use a regex in here, which would be nice because then I could uh, actually set up groups for the different, the parts, the long name and the short name. Because I think 
we're only ever going to see two two words according to regex i mean and so this uh this violates that rule so i'll look at that let's see open this up into uh, a block I guess I'll keep the line up there. Okay, so let's say that uh, the pattern we want to match looks like um, word plus, right? Shit, I'm so bad at regex. So we want multiple words followed by two parens followed by exactly two words inside the parens. Does that make sense? And uh, in Scala.R converts a string into a regex and I can have uh, group names so long and short. Okay. I forget exactly how this works, so I guess I'll, I'll go, go with the indent here. I don't want to fight it. So there's nothing in here that's dependent on the loop, so I'm going to lift this out. And because we're working in this like interactive way, I should be able to do some tests. So bar as I think I think match is what I want. No. Find first match in. What does that get us? Well, we have a compile error. Oh, okay. So... I may be able to fix this with a raw. No. Do double double backslash maybe. That seems wrong though. How do I get a literal uh, literal parens out of this? Okay. So this is a, a none, and then what about I guess I'll go with Mad Max. That is also none.
So now I'm going to start searching for stupid stuff like uh, Skull of Regex, uh, Escape, Escape Parenthesis, look at that. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Um, look ahead and look behind, huh? This seems not correct to me. So the square bracket regex should be the same problem. Hmm. I still feel like that should have been legal, though. Maybe that's all I need. To make it a triple quoted string. should move all this stuff up. So I'll focus on just extraction for right now, and then, okay, so Maybe my counts are uh, throwing it off. Fumbling around with regex is like way low on my list of things that I like to do. What do I need? Dot star space dot star 
sure. I guess. So this one doesn't match. This one does. And I want to be sure that things with too many words in here don't match. So this doesn't work for me. I think I just don't know how uh, how word matching works in regex. Come on, Stan. Match whole word. No, what a. That's not what I meant. Word boundaries, yeah. So what I could say is that I want a word and then also, oh wait, yeah, I need like, uh, like this, right? I don't think that's right. Can you do backslash W inside of a, does that even make sense? Learn to regex live on Twitch. This is no, no fun. Uh, so A to Z is for the second part. Multiple, multiple words. Ah, okay. Okay, good. I think we're, uh, I think we're in there. I needed square brackets around that thing. So, right, for a character class. That's odd, but that's fine. Okay, so if I take this one, um, and I call get on it, That is a regex match, and the match should have uh, 
Oh wait, yeah, that's a bad, that's a bad choice of word, because that is a keyword. Right. So now I can ask for groups. Really? Out of bounds exception. Um, I wonder why. Group count being one. Show me your matches. What do you got in there? Oh, find first match in. So maybe I need find, find all match in. And what is this now? An iterator. An iterator of matches. This doesn't seem like the right method. Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. So, uh, the problem here is that I need extra parens around this stuff inside the other parens. Right? Because this is a group, this is everything leading up to the parens, this is the open paren, this is the second group, our short name, and then the closed paren on the other side of it. So, group count should be two. Yeah. subgroups. Yep. Okay, great. So I can do uh, long and short. Okay, good. 
All right. So now we have a way to extract the stuff we care about. And so I can say, instead of this, I can map it map it to item pattern find first match in and then I can flatten And that gets me regex matches. And then uh, I can map. I can map the matches. To pairs of. I guess I'll do pairs of group. One and group zero. So I'll get the so that should get me the the ration form first. I did something wrong. I don't know what. Oh, I guess I just got the, uh, I got the groups backwards somehow, or something, I don't know. Weird. Okay, so, instead of doing this kind of thing, items by category, what I want to do is I want to get rows, essentially. And um, if I want to do rows, and this is for the, essentially the collectibles, then I need uh, name, description, category, and a boolean. Gonna split this. Right.
So these are my matches. So that's the name and the description. I also want the category and a bully in here. And I guess I could do like a, a sealed. No, traits are sealed. I want a final case class. Of row with a name and a description. This actually feels pretty unnecessary, but I, I started, so I guess I will uh, continue. We need a category int, and we need a got it of boolean. And so instead of returning these tuples, I would do uh, like that. This is a collectible. Right, and so the signature is wrong because, uh, because of the category. That's kind of in the neighborhood of what I want. And instead of gathering these up as items, I just want to return them. And so these are uh, collectibles that I want to generate some SQL of. Um, and so how did we say this worked? I think uh, I think it's like uh, insert into collectibles, and then a list of columns. Yeah, a list of columns. So I've got name, description, category, got it. Values and then uh, in here I'm going to do some Scala string templating and I'm going to say um, so I've got items, item rows, item rows, and so really. I'll be doing uh, make string, which takes a collection. It's kind of like the uh, string join. So it takes a collection of things and then 
as long as they're strings, uh, it'll concatenate them together with a separator. Um, so I guess I will do like a comma and a line break. But before that, Before that, I want to convert each item to a string that makes sense. So, we're going to map. We're going to take uh, the row or the item. And I'm going to do some string templating in here. Um, And so uh, it's like parens and then I wonder if there's something slick I can do here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There is something slick I could do here. Technically, I could add a two SQL method. Mm. I could also do a two string that gets me the right output, but that to me is a little rude. To override something as general as to string for, uh, for a particular task. going to do is I'm going to use triple quotes so that I can safely quote the values um, category And I can skip injecting the false in here. I'll just uh, I'll just drop it right into the SQL. I can't remember exactly if it's uppercase or lowercase for the F in false. But that's fine. This doesn't even need to be a def, it can be a val. This is all static. Oh, this is an iterator of collectibles? Why? Because, oh, right. Because I'm doing it group by group. Mm hmm. So, there we go. Oh, did I break it somehow? Oh, 
I don't know, this looks okay. An unchecked warning. Uh, I don't know what that could be. So what's interesting here is that um, it's saying that the output was cut off, but I'm not sure that's right. So we're looking for snakes, mushrooms, frogs, birds, fishes, fruit. I feel like we should have had a lot more in here. Hmm. So if we have, uh, so what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll basically have this script write the content out to a file, which is what I want anyway. Um, just to save me the heartache of having, having results dumped out that are being truncated away because of how the worksheet output is handled. Um, so if I want to do this for categories, it's going to be the same kind of thing where I'm doing uh, insert into categories. And I just have a name. And no, I'm going to push the ID as well so that this stuff lines up. because I want that. Prefix with an S to make it a uh, template string. So zip with index will give me a, uh, I guess I can do it like this. It's a pair. And the pair should be like, it's basically a, oh, really? I've got a list string. Zip with index should be String and int. Oh, right. Excuse me. This returns a new sequence. And the new sequence, when I... String, really? Uh, 
That's more like it. String and int. So I'm going to return a Pair one which is the string but also a pair two which is the int And if I wanted to make this a little more clear, I could switch this to a block with a case. So it's an implicit match. And I could say uh, name and ID. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Okay. Uh, so there's all that. We map it out. But then I want to make string with a comma and a line break. Oh, right, yeah, I guess I'm looking right at it. Um, and I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. So, can I import like Scala? I forget what the path is here. Is that what I want? I feel like Scala's file is different than... than Java's. Scala IO source. Jesus Christ. Yeah, writing to a file is what I care about. Print writer. Yeah, see, this is using Java imports. Um,
I guess that's fine. I'll do file and print writer. So what's kind of interesting is I'm not entirely sure where this output is going to go. Um, I guess I'm going to give it a shot and hope that it ends up either where the module lives or where the project root. But um, Okay, so I'm, I'm going to uh, start a new block here. Val uh, writer equals new print writer, which takes a new file, which is going to be categories.sql. And then I'm just going to write I'm just going to write that out. And I should really turn off interactive mode for this kind of thing. Okay, so... So I did that. And... I don't see anything. Yeah, this is an odd one. Well, I guess um, how do Windows file paths work here? Okay. All right, so I guess I, I just wrote some SQL out to somewhere. I don't know where, but that's fine. There's a, there's a categories.sql out there somewhere, just hanging out. I'll find it eventually. And what's also nice is uh, I wrote this out multiple times and it wasn't appending, which I, I didn't think it would because I think there's a separate method on here uh, for writing to the end of a file. 
Um, so what I can do is I can essentially duplicate this and uh, and do it for a collectible. and then run it. All right, the, well, that looks pretty close to the output that I saw before. Um, so that's interesting. He was complaining about truncating the output, but it seems like it really wasn't. And so there are a couple of sections that didn't match up with the format that we, we were trying to extract. Um, and I'm gonna have to kinda go through by hand to compare um, so snakes we've got snakes we've got mushrooms um, frogs we've got some frogs and birds Fish. We've got fish. What else? Fruit. Don't need. Uh, but okay. So these two. Miscellaneous and medi plants. So what's up with those sections? I think um, hmm. so for miscellaneous, I could do a couple of different things. I could, uh, I could do some different things, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste them. So let's see. So, I guess... I may rethink my schema a little bit. Because maybe... Um, oh no, I don't need to. I already thought about this description being option. What I don't like here is the fact that um, the names are, or what would be normally considered the short name, is kind of long.
So I don't know. Okay, so I can I can do some things just like in the editor here. Just to clean this up. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mess. Actually, no, I'm just going to clean this up section by section. There aren't that many of these. So now I should be able to do like a column selection and then convert that to a multi cursor thing. And um, shit. These are category seven. Yeah, that's not so bad. And I'll just do the same thing for Medi Plants. Just clean it up. Line by line. Column select. Wanted to look nice. So section it all up. All right. Uh, and so, so let's see. Really, I want this stuff to be. Um, So 
I'm going to actually remove the packaged food section. And then decrement these two, six and seven. So. Oh, wait, yeah. I forgot to uh, do the plus one, I guess. So I guess I'm good. Yeah, I saved my own butt accidentally with that. Not bad. Okay. So I want to take this and uh, basically put it into... Um, this is going to be very similar. Reordered a little bit. Put it into my diesel migrations. Um... And so I've got categories data. I also want collectibles data migration, which this stuff is going to go into. And uh, what did I say? Delete from... Okay. So where does that leave me? Um, I guess there are a couple of things that still really need to be addressed. Uh, the zone membership part is still going to be kind of a struggle. Uh, I need to populate the, the zones and then I need to do something to, to correlate them. The issue here is that I don't have any IDs on uh, on these guys, and I'm probably going to have to like do something something like I'm doing here. To get the memberships. Hmm. Yeah, so I may I may not be done with this. This is all good. It might be nice to drop the IDs in here. But then I could even just take the output from this and drop it into the Scala REPL instead of dealing with the raw text. Um, again, there aren't that many items here. So, sucking it up and Doing it by hand is not amazing, but
but the rumor is we only have 48 items. I haven't counted here, but... I'm glad that uh, this person put the parrot in the bird section. Did I read that wrong? I feel like in the other guide that I looked at on that wiki page, uh, there was a parrot in the misc section. Maybe there still is. Looks like we're in the neighborhood. Forty eight on the news. Okay, well, pretty good. keeping there. Um, And so, uh, the GameFAQs article has just a ton of great info, which is exactly what I wanted, um, relating uh, locations and the various items we have to pick up. Um, and so, I think they have it mapped both ways, and what I... What I think I want to do is I want to switch up the schema a little bit and I want to um, basically build up uh, just a two column lookup table. So pairing location and item IDs. Um, and then uh, when I start building my, my rest endpoints, I'll add uh, a payload that has both mappings of location to a list of IDs for items and then an item mapping to a list of locations and then I can uh, kind of drill down and filter through the data in the UI that I build uh, from either either angle I think 
probably the most common use case I'm going to have as I play through the game is uh, basically setting whatever the zone is that I'm in. And then uh, I want to see a filtered list of all the items that are in that zone that I can potentially pick up. Um, it's not going to be as often the case that I'm going to want to look for an item specifically and see where it is. Uh, unless I'm getting towards the end of the game and I'm panicking because I, I think I missed something or, or something like that. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on clearing each zone, zone by zone. And uh, hopefully that'll do it. Um, I'm also debating whether or not I want to try and extend this immediately for uh, camouflage and uh, face paint. Um, I guess the, the real thing that I want more than anything is to get the one camouflage uniform that uh, it's supposed to like make all the, the what are they called? Uh, MGS3 Frog. I forget what they're called. Carotan. Right, so there's 64 carotans in the in the game. And there's meant to be a camouflage that you can get that makes them make sound. So that they're easier to find. And so as I'm going through this, uh, trying to get the King of the Jungle trophy... I want to pick this up so that on a, a, another playthrough I can focus on getting the, the Karotans. Um, I don't think I'm equipped to deal with trying to juggle clearing both King of the Jungle and whatever the trophy is for, for all the frogs in a single playthrough. I mean, maybe. But the fact of the matter is... Um, there are just a lot of them and they they get clustered up and I don't know it seems like the frogs are, are a, a much bigger deal to uh, to identify and, and keep track of so I don't want to I don't want to potentially jinx the king of the jungle uh, run by getting distracted looking for uh, carotans. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off for now. Um, I'm gonna keep working on this, and then hopefully I'll I'll have a complete data set ready to go for the next stream uh, when I'll actually get back to trying to build endpoints in Rocket uh, and. Uh, start accessing this data from uh, from diesel so um, until then I guess uh, happy rusting and uh, thanks for joining I'll, uh, I'll catch you later <laughs>